Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the vlog. In this episode, we're gonna go through and upgrade the Route 4 Lite to the Rev3 isolated controller, so stay tuned. So before we jump in, a couple of project updates. I've took delivery of the new root controllers uh, this week, this next batch have arrived and you might have seen on my YouTube shorts uh, a quick little snippet of the controllers in their packaging still. I'm yet to test them, I'm yet to get them out of the packaging but I'm waiting for the boxes or enclosures to turn up some point this week I hope. So fingers crossed I can start fulfilling the back orders very shortly and get them shipped to you ASAP. Um, in other news, we've got uh, some dim rails designed and mounted. Uh, I did these in Fusion. Uh, these are quite neat, they just clip on and off. So they are compatible with the root controller. So you can now dim rail mount that. You should see it in this episode how that works. Um, they were 3D printed on the root printer that no one's seen yet. I built it a little while ago and um, well, the 3D printing market has kind of gone mad. There's a lot of good in innovation in that sector. So here's a little snippet of what it is. You might enjoy it. It's an IDX printer, bit of fun. And if you do want to see more of it, please uh, shout. Uh, I could do a bit more background to it. I've got another little project in the pipeline that involves this laser cutter here. Um, and it kind of involves the same kinematics that I did on the root printer. So I think what the plan of action is for today is I've got the old Rev 2 here, not even a Rev 2.1 on this machine and it's been working flawlessly. You've probably seen in my other videos of me machining some aluminium, some acrylics, some dye bond on here. That was all using this controller and it's been rock solid. No worries, there is no reason for me to change this right now. All I wanna do is upgrade it to the uh, Rev3 so I can start doing some educational videos. So when you get your root controller, if you ever buy one, there should be some nice small snippet size videos on how to go about doing certain things, so that might be um, how to power it on, how to configure it first off, how to connect the VFD, how to do certain things with your machine. So I kind of want this to be the template of them videos. Um, I don't know just yet the format of them just yet, but I want them to be quite small, bite-sized and concise, something outside this vlog series that kind of is an all over encompassing um, kind of information of the project as it goes. So, the plan is to try and get this mounted on the dim rail and then mounted on this little board that I've got here and I'll talk through the bits and bobs so far. So let's cue the chart time lapse and let's start ripping off stuff and start adding it back together. So that didn't take me too much time to get the uh, Rev3 moved over onto this kind of board that controls the Route 4 Lite. Um, the connectors unfortunately are slightly different pitch between the old version and the new version, hence why I had to deconnectorize it and then put the new ones on. It's not a big hassle but it was just something I had to do. Now you might look at this and go, mm, that looks a bit complicated. It isn't, it really isn't. Um, I think I've said this before but it's just a simple circuit multiplied up for the each individual axis of so the x y and z and we've got some extra stuff for the laser so we, whilst it looks like a lot of wires the basic cir circuitry is just limit switches and step motor drivers and they're all wired in um, this is probably be a bit overkill for this particular machine I, it doesn't need this level you know these drivers are the same drivers that i use on the big machine that you see in the back so yeah, they're more than capable for this size uh, machine, but 
it's what I had hand and it was a good way of demoing the controller with a CNC machine without having to take down my uh, big Route 4. So if I flip you around, whoosh, I've done this handy dandy um, little diagram. Uh, I'll put this up online very shortly, just showing you the peripherals and what you can, or give you an idea of what you can connect to the root controller. So it supports open loop step motor drivers. I've got um, this particular configuration for the common cathode. Uh, there's common anode for a slightly smaller type open loop step motor driver. Closed loop is fully supported as well. It just requires an input into the root controller, but you can paralyze them up. So I've got a video coming shortly because I've ordered some of these to do a demo on how you can do closed loop step motor drivers with the root controller and just a couple of peripherals like solenoid, LED, shop vac, RS485 uh, for the uh, spindle control, the laser port, you know, we've got other me methods of control for Wi-Fi, PC, via the USB cable and isolated inputs. So I think that looks pretty sweet what you'll see here is this button um, is just purely to enable and disable the laser a little bit of a spoiler I'm terrified of blinding myself with this particular laser so I've got some very swanky um, laser safe goggles that cost more than the uh, actual laser itself but I'm not taking any chances so this emergency swap switch is purely to enable and disable power to the laser nothing else so it's just quite a handy way of t disabling it and turning it on um, quick overview of the actual connectors as you can see these are our inputs down here power comes in through this connector for the isolated zone and then isolates its own internal power rails from there we've got some relays down this side and on this side is our step motor outputs now isolation is achieved through this these particular drivers these got opto isolators on its inputs these are a non these are non-isolated outputs but we've got an isolated 485 that is powered via the VFD that I've screwed down and then I've got the laser port just behind it again we've got the MOSFET areas down the bottom here I've got nothing connected to them but that's where you could provide a different power supply to drive some LEDs some solenoids it's perfectly fine at driving inductive loads um, and obviously I tried to keep this machine as compatible as it was before so I could swap out the laser head with the tangential cutter. Uh, it's probably unlikely that I'll ever do that now. Now it's mounted to the Route 4 but I've got that means to do so. So some of the wiring in here is still just tucked away just in case I ever need to go back. Currently as it stands it's set up in the laser configuration. I need to jump on the computer and reconfigure the new firmware. Uh, sorry. The configuration file for this particular machine as the pinouts between this controller and the newer one rev3 is um, certainly different so all i need to do is just update the pin pin numbering on this and load onto that and we're good to go i've got i'm going to make a bit more of a better repository because i know some people have been asking me about um, the config files getting confused about the pinouts so i'm going to try and be a bit more verbose on what file name is for what particular machine and what type of controller so stay tuned very shortly for the configs of this um, for the tangential cutter laser and the route 4 to go on the github page and so you can download and just update as uh, update your controller if you ever buy one so i've just realized i've done the whole vlog without any cnc action that's not acceptable so here is a little snippet of the Route 4 light laser engraving the inside of a lid that will be assembled on a root controller. So you might be a lucky person if you receive it. As mentioned earlier in this video, I've mentioned some other projects on the go. So if you wanna see a bit more of that, please leave a comment below. I do read them and it's always nice to see your thoughts or suggestions going forward. In the next episode, I think we'll have the cases and we should have all the bits together to start assembling some root controllers. So I'll Bring you along the journey on how I bring up these cards, test them, commission them and obviously package them ready for shipment and hopefully I'll get your back orders fulfilled shortly. So as always please like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks, bye!